Addiction is characterised by a number of key features. These include a strong desire to participate in a particular behaviour, an impaired capacity to control the behaviour, some discomfort or distress when the behaviour is prevented temporarily or permanently from occurring, and the reoccurrence of behaviour despite evidence that the behaviour is causing physical or psychological harm to the individual. For the purpose of this video, we'll focus on addiction to computers and technology. There are five types of internet addiction. Cybersex addiction, where users are constantly looking for pornographic sites or engaging in self-gratification with others in online chat rooms. Cyber relationship addiction, where users are regularly accessing and engaging in online dating sites, regardless of whether they are in a relationship in reality and often meeting people they have met online with no intention of taking it any further. Net compulsions, where they are just drifting from website to website with no particular direction, yet still unable to turn the computer off. Information overload, this can occur when people become too dependent on accessing advice from other sources and are no longer able to make their own decisions. Computer addiction, a mental illness which causes the excessive use of computers to the extent that it interferes with daily life. Many symptoms of computer addiction are lack of social interaction, using the computer for pleasure, gratification or relief from stress, feeling irritable and out of control. William Shakespeare wrote in The Two Gentlemen of Verona, use doth breed a habit. And this is so very true. To a place where individuals can create their own online information either about themselves or others around them. Anything can be put on the internet and the internet never forgets. The internet can provide a lot of answers to people who have questions and also provides a gaming experience to those who are seeking a virtual world. Although it is considered a social place, the internet is still full of information and where some people use the internet to complement their life through work or socialising, others use it as a way of coping with life experiences and social pressure. The internet can provide an escape for individuals who feel their virtual life is a significant improvement on reality. This is usually through games but can also take place on social networking sites. Social networking sites allow an individual to pay for any sort of information about themselves or others online, whether it be true or not. For some people it is easier to create a virtual and idealised profile which does not tell the truth about themselves because they feel nervous or scared about their reality. This creates a behaviour which Deirdre Boyd said can lead to a lack of control over this behaviour. While there is social networking, there is also online gaming, where the games can create an artificial feeling created by your body's natural endorphins when you've killed a monster or solved a problem. Some people who have been treated at Peter Smith's addiction clinic have been so engrossed in the virtual world that they, that they became malnourished after forgetting to eat or sleep. Now to a case of video game addiction that's hard to believe. A 15-year-old boy has almost died after playing on his Xbox for at least four days straight. The teenager was so caught up in the game, he only emerged from his room to snack and go to the toilet. Tyler Rigsby doesn't even know how many days he was holed up in his room. He thinks it was four or five, but he lost count. Totally engrossed in this game, Modern Warfare 3. The life you knew before is gone. Some people find it easier to cope with virtual world games and situations in which they can provide their character with their own behaviour. For some people playing with these virtual games, they can help them to understand their problems, which they may experience, or to avoid them completely and spend more time on life. For many individuals, the internet is part of everyday life, where conversations are constantly being interrupted because mobile technology is always within reach. Children use the technology earlier on in life because it is so easily accessible and the addictive behaviour can be learnt as they increase the usage. Many parents encourage children to use games, some of which are perfectly made to produce the addictive behaviour. The gaming industry in Britain is worth £3 billion and we are acknowledged to have some of the best game designers in the world. Gaming has shed its nerdy image and is now recognised as a central part of youth culture. We are seeing a new interest arousing children playing these video games. This is due to children 
having a strong interest in being the first on the block to master the newest video and computer games and other types of digital technology are ha harmless to many people. These technologies just offer convenience or a way to have fun with their friends or family members. But unfortunately, these technologies also carry the potential for the user. It started with Grand Theft Auto 4, moved on to, I think it was Call of Duty 4, which was the new one at the time. Call of Duty is the best-selling game in Britain. It allows players to fight battles against each other over the internet. I wouldn't move from my bed, because my controller would be on my side table. I'd turn it on, play, then realise it's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It could be up to a full 12 hours or more, or overnight. When did you first notice that you had a problem? When I stopped going to lectures, ran out of money, and had friends ringing me up telling me that I was playing too much. I realised that he was addicted before he did. He would eat, sleep and play games. And sort of generally being a social person just all went out the window and gaming just became his occupation, I suppose you could say, like, is what he did. Why? Why do you think you were addicted to this game? And what do you mean by addicted? I couldn't physically pull myself away from the console. I could go two or three days without sleep just because I was playing a game. And that, to me, sounds like an addiction. His habit cost him dearly. He's been thrown out of university and left thousands of pounds in debt, partly from buying games. <sighs> These addicted users or players often possess compulsive behaviours in their use of video games. They cut off connections with the real world and fall into a world of imagination and fantasy. 